sort of to bring people up to date, at least on what I think I am, which is not quite, I'm sure, the whole truth. It never is. No reason I should be any different. I got my fantasies. So I wanted, I wanted to read a part of the essay, Gemini, from the book, Gemini, trying to deal with us. But if black men ever would decide to define a black man in black terms, I think they would have different expectations of us as women. I went to the opening of an African exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum and noticed only about a dozen black men in the crowd of at least 200 people. And I thought to myself, how odd, no black men. Then I looked at the exhibit piece by piece and began to think I understood something. There was a beautiful door from the Congo. And looking at that door, I saw a man, a woman, several children in the yard, and this white man saying, your door is an excellent example of the Kashana people's art, and I must take it back to Amsterdam. And this beautiful African, barefoot, with perhaps an earring in his left ear, replies, but this door is the door to my house, and it is not for sale. And the woman, sensing something, stops the grinding of grain and begins gathering the children around her, while the white man goes on with, I must have the door. The museum needs it, and I can make 50 dinars on it. And the African rises to his full height on his long, light legs, tribal markings dancing slightly on his face, eyes clear and hard, saying, My family needs this door. It is mine. My father left it to me as his father did him. You may not have it. It is not for sale. And the cracker turns in a rage to leave. Then two, perhaps three days later, later the missionary comes up saying, My son, your door is needed in a great country far away from here. You, <laughs> you will be blessed by our Heavenly Father if you give your door to the merchant. And this magnificent African stooping by his doorway, playing with one of his children, shakes his head. I would be cursed by my ancestors. Go now, go away, and leave us in peace. Then in the night, the soldiers come with the guns. The African responds with a spear. The fire acts from the barrel. The woman screams. The children scatter, asking, what is the matter? The man is stretched out in a pool of dark, murky liquid, and the door is taken down, hoisted upon the shoulders of the black mercenaries, walked to the sea, and freighted back to Amsterdam so that it can be borrowed by the United States of America to show, the peop to show how the people in Kashana lived in 1582. And I began to understand why so few black men had come, because it was not a door at all, but dead ancestors murdered in their homes that they would see. Not a statue from Nigeria, but a raped woman, a slit throat, a burned village. And even as I saw that, I knew I would never understand the reality of being a black man. Men grow beards to protect the throat, have hair on their chest to protect the heart, have afros to cushion the head blows. And these, get, and these things become aesthetically acceptable, if not preferable, but they always have their groundings in survival. My man and I can walk down the street together, and if some guy says something out of the way to me, it's an insult. To him, it could be his life. I can walk away from words and gestures and still be a woman. He cannot and still be a man. So little of a black man's existence, re existence relies on his acts. His women, mothers, sisters, lovers control his life, and generally so irresponsibly that it can be frightening. And sometimes black women aren't very nice for a lot of reasons. And sometimes we use our power against him for a lot of reasons. And I think some of the hostility is real and must be related to as such. We're angry and so are they, but it's only when we admit it that we can get anywhere. I don't think a woman cares where she walks if you let her walk with you. And I don't think a man cares that a woman talks if, she, if she'll talk to him. And if we really understand we are born men and women and it's our choice whether or not we stay that way, I think a lot will change. If now isn't a good time for the truth, I don't see when we're going to get to it because I don't want my son to be a warrior or to go to some school where some insensitive teacher asks him why I'm not married or where some cracker thinks he can run my son down any time, any kind of way he pleases. We need some happiness in our lives, some hope, some love. I didn't have a baby to see him be cannon fodder. Cannon fodder. Something more must be decided. If it's a real war, then he must be brave and true. If it's a mental war, he must be black and proud. But if it's, the, if it's the wake the people up war, Martin Luther King did that. Malcolm X did that. Stokely Carmichael did that. Rap Brown did it. And if people aren't awake, then perhaps the dreams are too good to be disturbed again. Perhaps black people don't want a revolution at all. That too must be considered. And I decided to be a writer because people kept asking what would I become. And I couldn't see anywhere to go intellectually and thought I'd take a chance on feeling. I didn't want to get married, buy a five-room house in the suburbs, and have lunch at, a Cap at Caproni's as my big event of the month. I could see becoming a bored, alcoholic social worker with a couple of kids I didn't want by a man I barely spoke to, and wondering at 35 what I'd done with my life. The second greatest thing that happened to me was getting kicked out of Fisk University because I had to deal with my life. 
I could go back to school, join Delta Sigma Theta, marry a Meharry man, and go quietly insane. <laughs> or I could go on to live. And I think I wanted to be famous because my mother deserves to have the world notice her existence. And my family has worked too hard to be ignored. I don't think I would have cared much if it hadn't been for them, but they deserve more. Other people put a lot of time and energy into me, and they, de and they deserve something too. And love means nothing unless we are willing to be responsible for those who love us, as well as those whom we love. People don't just love you out of the blue, you let them. And people have loved me when I needed to be loved. So as an adult, I must give some of that love back to those who want it, or it would have all have been for nothing. I think I'm no different from any other colored girl who has to grow up and make, de and make decisions and live by them. I think we are all capable of tremendous beauty once we decide we are beautiful, or of giving a lot of love once we understand love is possible, and of making the world over in that image if we choose to. I really like to think a black, beautiful, loving world is possible. I really do, I think.